Right, joining us now with more reaction to our opening monologue, the author of the best-selling book, Trumped Up, How Criminalization of Political Differences Endangers Democracy, Professor Alan Dershowitz and former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, Joe DeGeneva, two of the smartest lawyers in the country. You know, last night, I got such incredible reaction to your comments. Collusion is not a crime, but, it go, but we go from collusion to obstruction to then bank records. He's not a target. But the media is like, well, he's not a target, but he's still in jeopardy. It's like there's no winning here. I have to tell you, if after a year of very thorough investigation and going after all the low-hanging fruit and getting people not only to sing, but some of them even perhaps to compose, if they couldn't have shifted him from a subject to a target, there's nothing there. What are and they the hoping? Has, of course they're hoping, uh, but I think they understand that. Now they're going after very, very weak issues, collusion. I challenge Mueller to tell me what statute is violated by collusion. There's a memo now by Rosenstein authorizing him to investigate collusion with the Russians by Manafort. But you can't investigate sins. You can only investigate federal crimes, and there is no such federal crime as collusion. How, how do they not know that? They know it, but they hope that by investigating collusion, they'll get somebody to obstruct justice, to commit perjury, to commit one of these other peripheral crimes. As they always say, it's in the cover-up, but it's not the cover-up. It's that prosecutors induce cover-ups, which is why innocent people You're shouldn't right. be testifying unless they absolutely have to, because you can be indicted for perjury even if you tell the truth. If you say something that's, that's and somebody a, else says a different thing... That's a thing, spectacular statement. Yeah. You, can be, you can be indicted for perjury even if you tell the truth. That's right, because if somebody contradicts you and the prosecutor believes the person contradicting you, you're indicted for perjury even though you told the truth. I'm going to get back to that question in, in just a second. Let me go to uh, Joe DeGeneva. Joe, Rod Rosenstein issues this letter to Mueller, mm -hmm. allowing him to go after mm -hmm. Paul Manafort the way he did a week after they did the raid. Now, why do I think the order of that legally needs to be reversed? Well, let's say this, first of all, about Rosen, Rod Rosenstein. His conduct from the beginning of this has been a disgrace, legally and every other way. He is an embarrassment to the administration. It is truly too bad that he cannot be fired. But let's, let's be very clear about this. The president has never been a target. The fact that he has been recently notified that he is a subject means absolutely nothing. He is not even a subject. He is a witness. A subject is a person whose conduct is within the scope of the grand jury jury's investigation. What the hell does that mean? It means they don't have anything on him. There have been 19 criminal cases, not one piece of evidence against the president of the United States. And now we are told that Mueller wants to wants to interview the president of the United States, who knows nothing, who has been a witness to nothing, who is not a target of the investigation. What we are seeing now is conduct by two public officials, Robert Mueller and Rod Rosenstein, that is unethical, unprofessional, an embarrassment to the United States government, and is undermining equal enforcement of the law oh, there's no doubt. because of what they are doing to a president of the United States. Rod Rosenstein, single-handedly, has taken away from the sitting president of the United States 16 months of his presidency by his incompetent and fearful conduct. You know why Rod Rosenstein appointed Mueller? Because he didn't want to make the tough decisions that you'd have to make if you were supervising a case being run by a United States attorney like Huber. Rod Rosenstein is a coward. He's a disgrace to the Department of Justice. It's a shame and you can't that the the president cannot fire him well, you know, because it's of the political consequences. They can't fire him, but it's amazing that he hasn't been recused. After all, he is the main Correct. witness on whether or not collusion or whether or not, I'm sorry, whether or not obstruction of justice occurred with the firing of Comey. And uh, does it, does he wrote it, but the memo. Does the president have absolute right to fire anybody? Well, he does. But, you know, politically, there's a difference between having the right to do it and it being right to do it. I just want to comment on one thing that Joe said. He's absolutely right that they have deprived the president of the opportunity to govern. But the Republicans did the same thing to Clinton. When they impeached him, they knew they were never going to get him At removed least it was from the Senate. six years into his presidency. Well, but still, they, they made a mistake, and I think they paid a heavy consequence for it. I think the Democrats would pay a heavy cost if they made the same mistake, mm -hmm. trying to impeach without being able to remove. I want to ask... By, by the, the way, by, by, by the way yeah. I, I want to say something about this notion that Mueller wants to question the president. 
What does he want to question him about? All right, this is my First question, all, though, Joe. He cannot is... question him about the firing of Comey. That is an Article II constitutional Absolutely. authority that the president mm -hmm. has to fire Comey. He, he had every right to fire Flynn. I, suppose they say, what were you thinking when you fired Comey? What were you thinking when what you fired Flynn? What kind of question Flynn? is that? Well, by the these, way, even... these are the kind of stupid questions right, that let me, could be Let me be throw asked. this question to both this of you. This is and, and... a perjury trap. Plain and simple. I agree with this the perjury trap point. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely right. outrageous. Look, here, it should end right now. Here's the question I have, because I'm sure Robert Mueller does want to question the president. So, Definitely. Professor, yeah. I would advise him not to. I'm not, I don't have your, your, your experience. Well, but to me, it's questions. a trap. Here's the written problem. Questions. Here's the problem. Written questions. Right, Joe, one second. Okay. Hang on, Professor. Here's the problem. Uh, the, uh, the special counsel has the power to put him in front of a grand jury without a lawyer. So he has some leverage. Uh, what I would suggest, and the president should, might consider this, is if he's asked <laughs> the question, why did you fire Comey, his answer is, you're not allowed to ask me or question any Article II decision I make. Just like you can't question senators for their vote, you can't question justices for their vote. If I acted within the authority of Article II, I cannot be compelled or asked why I did something. Would you advise this president to say no to any interview? Well, I'm not advising the president. No, I know you're not. I'm giving general, asking, general, general statements. Would you yes. advise the president? I would, I, I would suggest that it would be best if the president refused to answer certain questions that intruded on his Article II powers. Last, last word, Joe. Same question. The president should not agree to an interview, in my opinion, and I'm not giving him legal advice. I'm talking on this show. The, the president should, at the most, answer written questions in a very limited area, and he should never, ever be interviewed. This is an abomination. And even if it and means a, a year-long fight over executive privilege, that... I, that that battle should be waged. It, in my opinion, the president should not sit down for an interview. He, he can answer written questions in a right. very limited area, maybe 10, 12 questions. But what if he's tops. subpoenaed? What if he's subpoenaed in front of the grand will jury? Be. What would he do then? I think what you do at that point is you have to argue, you have to argue Article 2. And if Bob Mueller wants to take the president of the United States, who is not involved in any of the 19 charges that he has brought thus far, into a court over testimony, I think that that is, would be one of the most disgraceful periods in American history. Absolutely outrageous. You, you guys are amazing. I, I, I want you guys on every night. This is, <laughs> this is really important commentary. Thank you both. And it's rare that Joe and I agree about anything. I know. That, uh, today we agree. We didn't agree a long today, time ago. Today, today, today it's, today it's perfection.